From the incredibly conservative Wikipedia entry titled Climate Change comes this bit of information. Quote, Climate change includes both human-induced global warming and its large-scale impacts on weather patterns. There have been previous periods of climate change, but the current changes are more rapid than any known events in Earth's history. The citation provided is to the IPCC Special Report on Climate Change, Desertification, Land Degradation, Sustainable Land Management, Food Security, and Greenhouse Gas Fluxes in Terrestrial Ecosystems, published in 2019. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is among the most conservative scientific bodies in the history of Homo sapiens, yet they concluded in 2019 that Earth was in the midst of the most rapid change in planetary history. As an aside, 2019 was the year the Oxford Dictionary chose climate emergency as its word of the year. Doing so didn't accomplish much. The Wikipedia entry points out the consequences currently underway, including desert expansion, heat waves and wildfires becoming more common, melting permafrost, glacial retreat, sea ice loss, increased storm intensity, and other weather extremes, along with the extinction of species. It also points out that the World Health Organization is calling climate change the greatest threat to human health in the 21st century. The w entry from Wikipedia continues, quote, Under the 2015 Paris Agreement, nations collectively agreed to keep warming, quote, well under 2.0 degrees C, 3.6 degrees F, through mitigation efforts, end quote. As I have pointed out previously in this space, renowned professor Andrew Glickson pointed out in his October 2020 book, The Event Horizon, that the 2C mark is behind us. Even the scientifically conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change admitted to the irreversibility of climate change in their September 2019 special report on the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate. Clearly, Earth is in the midst of abrupt and irreversible climate change, with abrupt and irreversible both coming from the very conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. How conservative is the IPCC? Even the conservative and renowned peer-reviewed journal Bioscience includes a paper in its March 2019 issue titled Statistical Language Backs Conservatism in Climate Change Assessments. The paper by Gerardo Perez and colleagues includes this information. Quote, We found that the tone of the IPCC's probabilistic language is remarkably conservative and emanates from the IPCC recommendations themselves complexity of climate research, and exposure to politically motivated debates. Leveraging communication of uncertainty with overwhelming scientific consensus about anthropogenic climate change should be one element of a wider reform, whereby the creation of an IPCC outreach working group could enhance the transmission of climate science to the panel's audiences. End quote. The typical responses by most media outlets government officials and paid climate scientists are muted, to say the least. The baseline is routinely shifted from 1750, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, to 1850, and more recently to the 1950s or later. Shifting the baseline makes it seem as if the situation isn't so dire. After all, if you're focused on a single number being dangerous, such as 2C above the baseline, then shifting the baseline to a later, warmer date ensures that people will remain unconcerned. In addition, the nearly universal ignorance about habitat and its meaning further ensure that the masses remain in the dark about the importance of abrupt climate change. If we are being lied to, and I believe we are, then two questions arise. One, why? And two, what's the real scoop? The first question is easy to answer. We are being lied to so that the current corrupt set of living arrangements remains intact as long as possible. Even though civilization itself is a heat engine, as pointed out in at least five peer-reviewed paper papers by P Professor Tim Garrett at the University of Utah, reducing or halting industrial activity will cause a reduction or loss of aerosol masking, thereby triggering an even faster increase in planetary temperature. The aerosol masking effect is described repeatedly in detail at GuyMcPherson.com based on more than two dozen peer-reviewed papers dating back to at least 1929. That most people have never heard of the aerosol masking effect, sometimes called global dimming, does not mean that it doesn't exist. 
It also doesn't mean that I made up the aerosol masking effect, contrary to the accusations pointed my way on social media. Question two is, what's the real scoop? In other words, what in the world is going on in the world? Is there cause to be concerned to the point of claiming climate change represents some sort of emergency? I will provide a brief overview of a few relevant topics to answer this question. As I already indicated, the planet is heating faster than at any other time in its history, this according to a very conservative source, Wikipedia, and a very conservative, conservative source cited by Wikipedia, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. As I also indicated, the 2C guardrail is in the rearview mirror. It gets worse. The overheating of the planet is occurring faster than you've been told. 2C was never safe. And even more importantly, our species relies upon habitat for our continued survival, and that habitat is it's disappearing. Habitat for Homo sapiens is threatened by planetary overheating. Let's take a brief look at each of these three topics. I mentioned Professor Andrew Glickson and his report in his 2020 book that we have eclipsed the 2C mark. Glickson specifically states, quote, during the Anthropocene, greenhouse gas forcing has risen by more than 2.0 watts per meter squared, equivalent to more than 2 degrees C above pre-industrial temperatures, which constitutes an abrupt event over a period not much longer than a lifetime. End quote. Not much longer than a lifetime? Now that is abrupt climate change. What's this about 2C never being safe? Here's the short version of the story, which I've detailed in this space previously. The Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases, the precursor to the IPCC, described 1.0 degrees C above the 1750 baseline as the upper limit in October of 1990, the final year of the group's existence before they passed the torch to the IPCC. Specifically, the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases indicate, indicated that beyond 1C represents the potential for, quote, rapid, unpredictable, non-linear responses that could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. That's rapid, unpredictable, non-linear responses that could lead to extensive eco ecosystem damage. In other words, the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases acknowledged and warned about self-reinforcing feedback loops and their potential to destroy the very ecosystems upon which we depend for our continued existence. They knew about the importance of habitat, for human animals. 1C wasn't safe either, by the way. According to climate writer and speaker David Spratt, we triggered self-reinforcing feedback loops at 0.5C above the 1750 baseline. Spratt identified these positive feedback loops in his October 2014 presentation, Dangerous Climate Change, Myths and Realities. I identified 65 self-reinforcing feedback loops in my climate change summary at GuyMcPherson.com before I stopped keeping track more than five years ago. Habitat is key for the survival of every species. A decent overview of this concept is provided by Linnea Hall and colleagues in the spring 1997 edition of the peer-reviewed Wildlife Society Bulletin. Hall and colleagues define habitat as, quote, the resources and conditions present in an area that produce occupancy including survival and reproduction, by a given organism. Habitat is organism-specific. It is the sum of the specific resources that are needed by organisms. Whenever an organism is provided with resources that allow it to survive, that is habitat. Thus, migration and dispersal corridors and the land that animals occupy during breeding and non-breeding seasons are habitat. End quote. Earth is already losing habitat for vertebrates and mammals, and as indicated in the peer-reviewed literature. Earth is already losing habitat for the vertebrate mammals known as humans, as indicated in the peer-reviewed literature. As a result, we face an existential threat. Many of us, and certainly government leaders and paid climate scientists, have known about this existential threat for many years. Our collective response is briefly described in the October 25, 2021 headline from CNN, quote, CO2 levels in the atmosphere reach a 3 million year high, putting the world way off track on climate goals. There's a quote within the headline, way off track, and it comes from World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Pateri Talas. He points out, quote, 
The last time the Earth experienced a comparable concentration of CO2 was 3 to 5 million years ago, when the temperature was 2 to 3 degrees warmer and sea level was 10 to 20 meters higher than now. But there weren't 7.8 billion people then. End quote. A couple of phrases come to mind. Hoisted by his own petard. But in this case, it's hoisted by our own petard. And of course, that old Jim, too little, too late. How shall we respond? I have frequently mentioned personal actions we can take. They involve concepts such as integrity and recovery from grief. I have also frequently mentioned actions we can take at the level of our society, and I continue to encourage the promotion of these actions. We must, first and foremost, and therefore immediately, implement the mere reflection framework developed by Dr. Ye Tao at Harvard's Roland Institute. Please find the details and support this framework at mereflection.com. Habitat for Humans on Earth depends upon it. In addition, we must somehow encourage governments and corporations to safely decommission the world's many nuclear facilities. The continued existence of all life on Earth depends upon doing so, as I have pointed out previously in this space. We have a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks very much for watching.